it's been a really busy few days yep. for tech uh, because IFA happened, which yes. if you don't know, that's an industry event that happens in Berlin every year. Um, it's progressively getting less exciting, I would say. Um, I think all of them are to a degree. But yeah. There's still a lot of... Uh, a lot of companies have stopped coming out, it seems like. There's still a lot of stuff on show, though. And there's a lot, of, fun. lot of good technology there. And it's good for networking, definitely. And I think that's... 100%. Yeah, 100% why a lot of the um, tech industry goes out, especially journalists. I didn't particularly see anything. I I saw some cool things. I saw cool tech, saw amazing things about, or amazing promises about where tech is going, which is another thing about EFA is often there's not much of a distinction between concept products and things that are actually. That is true. So you can see really, really cool stuff at EFA, but is it actually that practical? Mm, no, it might have taken like 50 people to build like a small, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but really cool. I didn't see anything that particularly stood out to me as like world changing. Oh, you know what I did see that I liked? Yeah. You know that um, the on a um, laptop, the, it's got a, a camera, detachable camera module that you click in. What was that Honor? Yeah. Oh, the that Magic, is super cool, actually. The Honor MagicBook Art 14 has the coolest camera I've ever seen, and I really am excited to try that. There was not really much opportunity to get hands-on with them at the show. There's a few on the booth, but, like, um, yeah, I'm really excited to try that out because that is genuinely quite a cool concept. So it's, it's effectively a magnetic pin system on the bottom of the camera module, which is about a big, uh, slides into the chassis itself, and you push, push, unclick it, and tap it on top. It, amazing. Really cool. Great for privacy lovers. Um, really good for increasing screen to body ratio. 97% screen to body ratio. It's basically just a screen at that point. Yeah. Um, really, really impressive. I really did like that. I think that was a really, like, such a simple thing. Really nice way of doing it. Yeah. No, I do think that is actually brilliant. Um I am one of those privacy nuts. I have like a privacy cover on my exactly? on my pri my personal laptop. About to put one on my work laptop because mm -hmm. um, God knows where that's going. Anyways, um. <laughs> 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 no. Well, I often like if I'm not on my I'm not if I'm not actively doing something on my work no. laptop. That thing closed. Um, <laughs> anyways, but yeah, Efa was Efa was the Honor Magic V3 was also launched. World's thinnest foldable phone. Uh, nine not for long. Uh, no, supposedly not for long. Supposedly I for long. still have doubts. So we've heard a rumor that the OnePlus Open 2 slash Oppo Find N5? Oh God, are they on 5 already? Um, oh. will, will beat it. Uh, frankly speaking, I don't know how. And also, it, having gone from the older V2 to the V3, which is a 0 0.7 mil difference, there's absolutely no difference in the hand. Like, I, you just don't feel it. And they're talking about a maximum of a 0.2 mil difference. It's not going to make a real world difference. But it is very cool. I've not gotten deep, deep with it yet. But so far, I'm very impressed. I think the camera is fantastic. They have done a lot of work to increase the durability, which I'm excited to test out over the coming weeks. And... I, I've used the V2 the, for a long time as a kind of daily driver. So I'm really used to the way it works. I'm really used to the way Honor works. And this is just a great continuation of that with a bit extra. But also, they've kept it the same price, which is oh. really nice to see. What is that price? <laughs> uh, 1699 GBP, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, which is a lot, but foldable phone territory is it's actually on the cheaper side. Cheaper than Z Fold 5, cheaper than Pixel Fold. But regardless, it's a good phone. The other thing that I saw, uh, again from Honor, but as part of their keynote speech, they've uh, announced a new technology for detecting AI deepfakes. Now, it's not live yet. It's going to be brought out on the Magic 7 series, which is, I think, probably going to be around MWC February time. It's like a preview. Yeah. Um, but effectively, you get pop-up. It says, test for AI deepfake. Tap it sparkles on the screen on the video or the video call or the image. Uh, actually, I suppose it wouldn't work on an image. On the video or the video call. And... Oh, it doesn't work on an image. I'm assuming not. That I clarifies a lot because images can get really, really good now. Like, that isn't... That's... It might... I, I, I don't know video enough to say. Okay. 
but they, it basically picks up pixel and lighting uh, inconsistencies, which are prevalent in deep fakes. And it will then say, we suspect this is a face swap. And I haven't had a chance to get hands on with it, but uh, that <laughs> looks fantastic. And I think it's really good. Oh. It, it would be so insulting if you had like a real photo of yourself and it was like, we've detected this. <laughs> 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 the most insulting. <laughs> we have detected that you are not real. Anyways. The thing about that is they haven't even released it. They're going to have to do like so much work. Like the way the AI is evolving, it's evolving so fast. Like no one can keep up with it, I feel like. So even the the software that I showed you now is going to be vastly like underprepared for I think the deep fakes of six months from now. I mean, I, I do get your point. It is evolving quick. What I would say though is it, they're a tech company. Like I'm... Either they will have thought of that or it's stupid. Like you, I can't, and I can't imagine that any big tech company that is coming out of software like this is not also going, we need to make sure we're keeping pace with it. Yeah, I, I get your thoughts. point, but I'm fairly certain. I mean, they are smarter than me, so I imagine well, they will have thought. It's nothing that, yeah. I, I, I don't, you Difficulty know. Difficulty though. I hope so. I hope, I hope they do because for once... I actually genuinely got excited about a bit of software. I'm quite, you know, it's quite easy to get excited over hardware sometimes. It's the shiny stuff and whatever. But this was the first time, but it, you know, I tried to kind of distance myself from AI as much as I can because like it all gets very overwhelming very quickly. I think you'll probably agree. Yeah. Uh, and this was the first time I've heard something where I'm like, damn, that is a really, really good use of it, you know? Yeah. You could have, there's such a, uh, stigma around deep fakes as well. Not stigma, that's probably not even the right word, but it's so <laughs> prevalent in people's minds, just like the average Joe's mind right yeah. now, you know. Um, my mum was talking to me about it the other day because Coronation Street have done a storyline and so have one of one of the other soap opera we have over here. They, they've started doing like... Um, Addressing the real concerns. Yeah. yeah. Modern day. Exactly, exactly. And that apparently is deep fake technology. Obviously post Aoife... We, of course, then had an Apple launch Apple, event. Yeah. They moved from their normal Tuesday. Mm. Don't know why they normally do it on a Tuesday. It's very interesting. But Who knows? Mm. So let's just list what we had. So Apple Watch Series 10. Not the series with the Roman numeral 10. No. People get really upset Which, when I say the Apple Watch. Or like when I say like the iPhone X. They're like, what? It's like, no, it's just, it is spelled X. It's mm. fine. I know it's 10. I, I, part of me does think that uh, <laughs> they missed an opportunity there. No, I actually think that given everything that's going on with X.com, oh. I think they've actually gone, this might end up being a really bad thing to be associated by design. Really? Even I, if Apple themselves officially say it's 10. They still say it 10. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I think... Uh, it, wow, how do I say this without being, like, hunted? Uh X.com has become one of the most ridiculous oh, it's horrible. platforms in the world. And I think that it's anyone in their right mind, and particularly a brand worth many trillions of dollars, is going to turn around and go, we're not risking it. Yeah, well, they're one of the ones that like refuse to advertise with them now, aren't they? Exactly. So, Which is a brilliant movie. I, that just earns my respect, really. Yeah, fair enough. I, I mean, I, I don't know anything for definite, but my guess would be that that might have factored in. Yeah. Um, it's a huge shame about the tech community on X because I see so so many tech reviewers, especially in our industry, built their initial presence on X, and now they're kind of forced to. They've still got to be on it. Yeah, and they've got to pay for verification and stuff. And it's like, oh my god, Elon Musk has them in a like. There's so many people, but the the thing is that there's still nothing that's really taken over in the same way. You know. Yeah. The, this blue sky and threads and all that sort of stuff. Nothing has captured no. the zeitgeist in quite the way that the original Twitter did. Yeah. X. Maybe we should just go back to Tumblr. Oh, please. Can we go back to that 14 year old <laughs> Sam on Tumblr with his little it's emo so fringe? Good. Oh, let's do it. Honestly, mini blogging, baby. Anyway, we've gotten slightly off track. So Apple Watch Series 10. We also had a new color for the Apple Watch Ultra 2. 
Yeah, black. Black titanium. And we have AirPods. So AirPods 4, which now come... At- I hate this. What? I hate that they've put out... It, it feels very nothing of them. Hang on, let's let's run through the products and then we'll get yeah, into all the things. Sorry, sorry. AirPods 4, <laughs> which now come in two varieties. You've got the base model AirPods 4 and then the AirPods 4 with an active noise cancelling version. Uh, AirPods Pro 2 and AirPods Max didn't get any uh, second generation or third generation. They are just new Standard colors upgrades. and oh, USB-C. I, I must that's say, about it. that's not- Starlight, they knew what they were doing with that. They ate. Let's... Let's get into that in a minute. And then uh, we have the iPhone 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, 16 Pro Max. Right. Right? That's yeah. all the products. Yeah. Okay. Where do you want to start? Oh, boy. Um, interestingly, I don't think they mentioned the Apple Vision Pro for like a moment. They did in the... Spatial video? Yeah. Yeah, that's about it there, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Anyways, I think because I think a lot of people were thinking they were going to do some updates. I don't know. I suspect they'll end up giving it its own event, personally, mm. because it's meant to be their like next flagship. I suspect they're going to start giving it its own day in the sun. What I will say, though, just as a complete A side, have you seen, you know, the um, I can't remember if it's Asus or Acer <laughs> do a spatial uh recording device like a, ca- a camera with stereo and what i want to know canon do okay what i want to know is do all of these cameras work for the vision pro i would suspect there's like a fancy sauce that apple has but i would i, I would imagine you can still record stuff for the vision pro but it's probably not as maybe this is getting niche but like sms messages as to iMessages? As to RCS. Well, like, like you know. Like, oh, I think we've touched a nerve of the iPhone fan in the room. No, 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 no. I mean, like, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Um, you know how <laughs> iMessages, it's like, it's like, it's still texting. But, like, it's got, like, a little special apple. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you, you know. It's, okay. I, I feel like there's going to be a I, format, a special format that's going to be like specific to Apple. My I think that it's would be, be a not re- special for some reason. I think that would be a really really bad decision on their part. Oh yeah, that'd be horrible because there's so few people already making content yeah. for it. Um, At least if the other stuff works, you could just port that you know over to. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. A, a separate issue for another day. But um, yeah. Anyways, back to pick, the things they a- actually announced. I got to complain about the AirPods. Okay. Um, first of all, I when they said they redesigned them, I don't know if anybody else <laughs> had this moment where, <laughs> where I looked at that and I was like, that is the same thing they have had for the past few years. But then I pulled out my first or second gen AirPods. Mm. I was like, oh my God, they have changed. Have you seen the stems on those things? So long. Mm. Like, how did that go in my ear? We don't put the stem in your ear. No, I know, but how did that hang out of my ear and, like, not... I don't know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I, it's like an earring. My my thing is always when companies, like, ear, earbud companies say, we've used the largest data set ever to make mm. it absolutely perfect for, like, 96% <laughs> of people. It's like, mm. I swear everyone's saying that at this point. Like, I'm just... I'm. It's one of those, you know, those tech things that's like, you could never actually disprove it, but I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I don't show buy it research. anymore. Do you know what I mean? Show, show um, me the, it, show. it probably, they probably do use something like that. And, you know, yada, yada. it does look less painful. I'll give it to them. I mean, I, I will never wear a half in pair of earbuds again. I, they, they fall out far too easily for me. It's not my bag, but. Yeah. They're uncomfortable for me. Now, what now we, that I've moved on to the pros. Uh, what do we think about the ANC option? Ugh. Well, the thing is, right, I don't see what the difference is between these. Well, first of all, the naming convention, they're still just AirPods 4, but you've just got to specify now. As far as I know, you go to the site and you can pick either AirPods 4 or you can pick AirPods 4 with noise cancellation. Yes. And that, I, oh, I don't know. Why don't you just. Yeah. Why, why don't they just give 
active noise cancellation to all of them at this so, point because that is it's kind of an industry standard now like you see active well noise, it's, it's, i th i think because obviously they're half ins right mm -hmm. so it, there's quite a lot more technology that is needed to make them noise cancel because obviously you've not got the passive cancellation mm -hmm. so i think that there's a part of it that is i suppose i am not count uh, yeah because i it's think half -ins. there's a part of it that is this is a technological thing where they're like we have done this yeah and they're not i don't think they're the first i don't think, but you know say apple has this now the other part of me just i cannot see how this doesn't cannibalize airpods pro 2 sales yes because airpods pro 2 like what what is the big difference what's because what's the price difference between these now i think it's about 50 quid yeah like why i guess the only thing that would make me want airpods pro 2 over the standard ones is the form factor and of course it's it's the ladder sales technique right that apple's famous for where so you get in at the airports for 129 or whatever they are. And for an extra 50 quid, though, you could get A and C. The then for an extra 50 quid from that, it's like, oh, well, you could get the Pro and you have an earbud that actually stays in. So you're essentially uh, saving money. Yeah. And then before you know it, you spend an extra. And, it, you know, this is the way that Apple has always worked. It's very well documented. And a lot of companies. But I, I just, it, it irks me. It really irks me because I just don't see... You're right, you know, there's a there's a bit of a nothing vibe to it where there's a lot of stuff coming out. And I, I suppose Apple has the they're consumer less guilty base of it. to... Yeah. I, don't know I don't know if they're less... Mm, I, they've got the consumer base, right? They sell 80 million iPhones a year. Like, there's enough people out there with Apple products to use them. Yeah. I guess I just don't see that. The, I just, I don't think... There's a big enough distinguishing factor. It's the same argument we make about the mini and the plus and things like that, right? Mm. We know that they it's sell like they 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 sell like five to ten percent of total iPhone sales every year. Oh, of the right? iPhone, you're talking about iPhone, not yeah, 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 not, yeah, yeah. So the, the of of the iPhone sales every year, the mini plus whatever variant they opt for this that time round makes up like five to ten percent sales on average. So you say, well. Is that worth it? You know, blah, blah, blah. Would those people not go and buy any other iPhone? I suspect they probably would just opt for something different. And I think this is the same thing, but with earbuds. And that bugs me from a tech waste perspective. Mm. That's where it That's where it really annoys me. Because, you know, people are going to get a pair of Air, Air, uh, AirPods. I called uh, them earpods well, earlier today yeah. too, and I was like, oh my God, 2010. Uh, people are going to get a pair and they're going to, you know, use them for a few years. And uh, long story short, the likelihood is they end up as waste. And I think that that's the gripe I have is that it, it's creating another unnecessary thing where someone might go, oh, I might, I might upgrade earlier than I probably need to because there's a cool new thing here. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, to me, that just starts to to border on a point of if you're the type to upgrade you though to do it. every once in a while are you really going to say oh my airpods i can upgrade the airpods that i currently have to airpods with noise cancellation you would just go all the way if you're doing that when you've only recently bought airpods altogether mm. you're gonna just probably go to the pro i would have thought so yeah like i don't know i mean this this touches on um the issue of like consumer waste mm. um in that everyone loves to complain that, and i'm saying this as like the moderator of our like social communities um everyone likes to complain that like oh there's not a big enough there's not a big enough change this year like it's not it's not that mm. big there's not change what do they think they're doing this is so stupid this is a waste of my time and i'm like you don't want it to change that massively every year. They should not be encouraging. I mean, as much as this is difficult to do as a company that's goal is to earn money, they should not be encouraging people to upgrade their phones every single year, especially at the price point that they are now. Mm. Um, like that's an investment piece. Um, it should be lasting you multiple years. Um, so no, you don't need to upgrade from a 15 to a 16, practically speaking. Um, you don't need, yeah, you haven't. Or I, even I'm a 14, still using the 13. 13 yeah. One of those things that I think is always, there's no, 
there's no viable solution, right? If you, if you, even if someone like Apple turned around and said, we are going to make the drastic decision that we are going to release a phone every two years so that we are contributing less e-waste, we're actually going to re reduce our profits in the process because we're going to effectively not sell the 80 million phones in the every other year. Um, they got to make that up somehow. But we're going to do that because we think it's the right thing to do for the planet. Fantastic. I'm sure their investors don't think that. Exactly that. <laughs> that is the and issue. You, it, money makes right. the world go round and, you know, I'd love for it not to be the way, but unfortunately it is. So, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, I like money too, so can you really blame them? We all like money. I mean, I was, let, let's not turn this into a Karl Marx <laughs> thing. We're going to go... Um, <laughs> While we're on the subject of iPhones, <laughs> what do you make of the 16 range? Um, yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> that I... is, put that on the flyer. <laughs> um, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sound like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, it's it's fine. It like it's good. It's a good phone. I'd still buy it over anything else. Like I'm not gonna go out and say it's like. Oh my God, it's world changing. But again, like I said, I don't want it to be world changing. I just want a good phone. Um, Can I sum up your uh, <laughs> talk there in one sound? <laughs> no, I don't want people to think I'm being negative about it because I'm not. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know where to go from here either. What do you do with phones now? I mean, we were talking about this the other day, you and I, about like triple fold phones. It's like we're now innovating for what if you like triple fold phones. Anyways, let's not even talk about that. But gonna, I think well, it's innovating gonna, for the sake of innovating. We're going to get there in just a minute because that's also <laughs> that's a lot. But um, oh, yeah. I, I think the, the iPhone 16 range looks good on paper. I think there's a lot of features on there that are cool i think it's a not you know it, it's a generational upgrade by and large there's not loads of stuff that is massively different we've got the new capture button which i'm not a fan of i think I have mixed feelings i think it's a great idea done entirely wrong uh i think it, the the concept is fantastic it's the right you know it, it feels right in your hand to take a photo in that way i think they've put way too much on it also it seems a little bit um, backwards thinking, given that most of the world these days takes photos that way. I this is one thing, right? Have you been to Have you been to like a gig or an event recently? I swear to God, no, you can. Because I'm an old woman. You can tell the age gap in the room, because I stand there and I. Where's my phone gone? I stand there and I take a photo like that, and all around me, anyone who's under the age of like 25 is doing that, <laughs> and I'm like. It's that is, it just seems a bit of an oversight on that side of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, I hadn't thought about that. I, yeah, it's a bit. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it because, on one hand, I I do think I I, I want that kind of button to be integrated somehow. Mm. I don't know how I want it to be integrated though because everything. The only reason I can think of having a button on the side like that is when you do not want to. This is the only purpose that I like that button for because you can, it's very, very hard to get a still shot when you're poking at a screen or mm. pressing a side button. This seems that it will be so minimal. It'll actually be more like a camera shutter button in which you'll be having not as much of that shaky hand situation. That's what I'm seeing that be good for. I, but yeah, I get, I agree with you. It's solving a problem. I didn't really care about that. I, I, I want to see that technology being used in a way that is smart, that's not necessarily a camera, because like you said, it does feel a little bit antiquated at this point. Um, but I don't know how I would propose it being used. Because I think I'd I think I'd equally dislike any of that because you've got a whole touch screen. I well, I think I said to you, the way I'd like to have seen it was more like the action button, where you have a range of options, but you select one. Yeah. Because at the minute, the way we've seen it used is that you can go through pretty much every setting in the camera. I think I'd like that button where the action button is. I just, I think there's too, they've that would make crammed sense, too much into it. And now it feels like it's going to be too cumbersome, personally. 
And yeah. I say that as a photographer and someone who really enjoys taking photos with a wide range of gear. I want a button to do one thing, maybe two things, but, but you know, I don't want it to do everything and be haptic and sliding and back and forth and this and that. And I can light press and touch, yeah, but it's too much, too much. Really? See, I like that type of technology. Um, I don't like what it means for case manufacturers, I have to say. That's... I know they said that the case was going to basically have, because did he say it was, I can't remember what material he said it was, maybe sapphire or something. And then it was going to have a conductive piece in the case to ensure that the sapphire portion of the case conducted your finger movement. Right. Which I suppose makes it more complicated for a case. Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, I, I haven't checked, but I can imagine that the case price expensive. has gone up. Yeah, yeah. Um, which because when that initially came up, um, I actually live streamed it all on TikTok. I don't think anybody really joined me. Um, that's okay though. Um, <laughs> so I was chatting to myself in my office, um, but when that came up on screen, the cases, I was like. <laughs> really don't have anything to talk about this year because they're talking about their cases, which they never do. Then I was like, oh no, they actually had to put a little bit of an, of it, um, innovation into that. I was just going to say as well, because I'm slightly conscious of time. Hmm. Uh, don't be. After, <laughs> <laughs> after the Apple launch. Oh no, do you know what? Actually, before we, before we delve Can into Can we that, talk about the speakers on the, the, the watch? Right. Uh, yeah, Nightmare. Let's, let's very quickly... <laughs> don't want people to have that. Let's very quickly talk about the Apple Watch Series 10. I, I, Can you imagine the commute? See, I don't oh, mind it for myself, awful. but I don't trust other people. I don't want other people to have no, it. No, you can just imagine everyone, <laughs> like the back of the bus crew, sat there blaring there. Mm. Yeah. God, I sound like such an old man. But I, I do get your point. I think that that speaker is going to be a real pain. Menace. Menace. In those scenarios <laughs> where we already see people who are being a bit antisocial with the way they use their tech. Um, obviously, don't do that. But yeah, that, uh, oh. that is bad. What I will say, thinnest Apple Watch ever, 9.7 mil. That is, But bigger. That's the other thing. I, the thing I need to check and I haven't seen yet is if the dimensions are bigger or if the screen is bigger. because we're The seeing, screen and the dimensions are bigger. Are the dimensions bigger? Are you sure? Yeah. Because we've seen it's a lot. It's as big as the Apple Watch Ultra now, isn't it? No, that's the screen. And I, this is the thing that. You think it's got the same percentage of screen? Yes. As the Apple Watch Ultra? Yes. I, I, because it, I mean, for starters, it's Because it comes in a 42 and a, 40, and a 44, yeah. And a 46. 42, 46. Uh, but both of those are a millimeter bigger, which in practice you're probably not going to see, but. On it, tiny, tiny little wrists. Yes, yeah, you well, uh, you know, uh, you don't need to. You don't need to preach about watch sizes to me. I know. <laughs> uh, You've got big wrists, though. I, oh, you, I know you have I, dainty I, wrists I, for a man. Ickle, ickle, bickle, baby wrists. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But nothing next to these little skeleton, <laughs> <laughs> skeleton adventures. I I do like the look of it. That polished black finish that they've got as well. I think two things. Number one, oh, that is hot. And number two, that is going to scratch so fast. Yeah. But I do think it was quite good overall. Um, I, I also, want the gold titanium. I'm going to have to splurge for the titanium if I get enough. Yeah. Because I've got the Apple Watch 5 right now. I'm not even wearing it at the moment. But I have the Apple Watch 5 and I'm thinking, now is the time to upgrade. Speaking of upgrading, <laughs> I was like, 10 works. That's double the age of my current <laughs> one. Uh <laughs> I was also going to say Apple Watch Ultra 2 gets a new colour and just on our little rant about e-waste there, mm. I'm really, really pleased to see that because I really expected Apple to launch an Apple Watch Ultra 3 and it's not necessary. Yeah, no. Absolutely not necessary. There is nothing they could do right now to better what they've already got in the Ultra 2. To be honest, the Ultra 2 and the Ultra 1 didn't really feel like that big of a jump. It was mainly a new screen technology, if I remember rightly. The, the average person really doesn't. You just don't need to do it. Like, I'm, I'm really pleased that they didn't. I think that is unusually conscious business practice from a large corporate company. And that was really good to see. So I think that's the one thing about Apple that is pretty solid is they don't release a thing until they want, I mean... They, they usually don't release a thing until they think it's ready. I will say that. I know there are a couple things you could argue, but 
Overall. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I agree with maybe that. Maybe that's maybe being an Apple fan. I, th- I think it might I be. I think it is. Maybe. But on, on this know. occasion, really happy to see that. I'm, I'm just also going to jump onto the other release this week and the one that I am the most excited about. Ugh. Huawei. Ugh. Not hours after the iPhone 16 launch <laughs> unveiled the Huawei Mate XT Extraordinary Master, which might just be the worst name. I think it's a machine. It's, trans- a, phone. it's a machine translation of the name. I think. I don't. In any case, <laughs> is the, this a phone? The world's this is the tri- first triple folding phone has launched in China. Uh, Do you think they saw the? Vi- oh, I haven't put that video up. I actually. But we were saying that um, Technex. No, not Technics. Techno. Techno. <laughs> not Panasonic. Uh, <laughs> Techno uh, did say they were like releasing a concept. They've Do you got... think Huawei was like, oh, oh no. No, no. I think <laughs> Huawei, Huawei have been working on this for so long. Techno are obviously in that game as well. Um, I, I don't think this has changed at all. You don't think they got uh, scared into an earlier release? No, not one Schedule. bit. Um, and what I will say... I. I follow this really closely. I'm massively into foldable phones. Um, I think this is the form factor that we always deserved but never got. I think this is mm. I think this is the right way that foldable phones should work. The phablet. Uh, it, but it really is. It's the perfect phablet. I want the phablet back. I, I mean, go buy a Huawei Mate XT. I think you're there. Not that. The, the camera sounds pretty decent. Uh, overall, I think folding. that... Sorry? <laughs> don't want it folding. You guys haven't even mastered the, the first, the one fold situation. Honestly, the, the thing is as well, like you watch the video of it and it is so The sleek. video is quite good. Uh, the way that, you know, you obviously go from, because the, the folded three-way device is barely thicker than like a S24. Is that That's what, what they now? said, isn't it? Um, I, they say barely thicker. It's a, it's a few millimeters thicker, but it's not gargantuan. It's not like... I think most people have only ever seen like a Samsung fold because they're very popular here in the UK. So it's not like three of those. They are, Samsung are effectively a doorstop at this point when it comes to I've, foldable phones. I've never seen a fold in real life, a Samsung fold. Have you not? No, I've seen flips. Okay. I love a flip. But but even so, Great you know phone. what I mean? Sam- Samsung's foldable phones are notably thicker than other brands. So I, ju- I think when we talk about a trifold phone, some people might think it's like three of those wedges and it's it's not. Um, it's it's quite slim, opens out into an absolutely massive tablet, but it does have, do you remember when we did that video and I said about how um, you'll have no display on the rear of the device? Yeah, that actually was quite smart. That is an absolute masterstroke on the on the mate xt it's a leather back as well like they've obviously gone very premium with it so it's a leather back it is like it looks sleek Actual i think roll out there i think it's uh synthetic vegan, vegan safe leather excellent um but you it looks like a valet tray from the back like it is sweet um, valet tray. Mm. it's what you uh if you ever bought like jewelry yeah. You have like a nice soft tray. Have I ever bought a No. Um, have like a nice soft tray that you put stuff in so that it doesn't get scratched. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Working it out. It's fine. It's fine. I'll Google it on my own time. Okay. Um. <laughs> um, in, uh, now, the one thing I will say, obviously, uh, Huawei are actually growing rapidly, but in China due to sanctions from the US. So there's no international pricing. But the base model is 19,999 yen, which equates to about 2,300 pounds. Ooh. Now, that's a lot. Yeah, it's got to be doing more than folding three screens for me. I see. But the thing is, and I sort of said this when we did that video the other day, I think this could be... I think this is the next step for phones. I think the folds that we've seen like this, while fantastic, have been a first step, a bit of a breeding ground, a bit of a technology kind of a way to pursue the technology. But realistically, devices like this one that we've seen where you can have it slim like a phone and you can then open it out into something that is genuinely tablet sized. I think that is where the market makes sense. 
And I think that, that is, this is going to be the device we look back on as the, whoa, that was the turning point. I think Americans will try very, very... Uh... Very hard to make sure that's not Huawei. Yeah, I think they'll yeah, I conveniently forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very American. <laughs> yeah, we get so many comments that are like, ugh, as soon as you said Chinese... I'm like, I don't think we've ever actually said this is Chinese made. We'll usually just say the company and then they assume. Can we actually just, while well, we've got a second here and we've brought it up, the whole DJI drone. Oh my God. Ban. Yeah. Like, is there nothing that the US are not willing to ban? For crying out loud, what are you going to have left? Like, it's just. Certainly in our own innovation. It seems like they have latched on to this notion that China equals bad. Yeah. And they just will not deviate from it. Yeah. With little to no proof. Like, okay, sure. If the Chinese government, I, I guess if they go to that company and they're like, give us all your data, that company's like a little bit screwed. But like, I, they're not using an army of drones to spy on the US. What are they going to do? Like, unless, no, like your backyard is, your backyard ain't, yeah. I don't think they care. I don't think they care. I think, I think, how do I put this politely? <laughs> I mean, I do think, you live in Alaska? Maybe then they do care about mapping that out. But anyway. I think, <laughs> I think a lot of people in power in the US have really, really lost the plot. Oh, yeah. Let's not even talk about that. Like, I, it just seems... But it, if this it's, isn't a political it's podcast. Bat- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if anyone can explain <laughs> it to me, like, I would love to understand. Oh, trust all of us would love to understand. <laughs> because, like... <laughs> The thing is as well, like it's not even I've I've done a bit of like research myself not not loads, but enough to try and like grasp it. For Huawei especially, because I was like, I I I'm not sure I fully grasp what's behind it. And as far as I can see, there's nothing all that concrete. No, it's it, racism. It, right. Like okay. are they doing nasty things with your data? <laughs> Probably, but everyone is. Yeah. Just don't own anything. Cut yourself off. Welcome to I'm the afraid, 2000s. Like. I'm afraid your data is the price you pay for living in today's society. Literally. And on that rather <laughs> depressing note, I think it's probably time we round up. 